So I want to show you some of the modifications I made to the jugs before getting them wet. What we've done is I've gone in and I've taped them up with white tape just to make TPWD standards. I've added a little chartreuse tape to the top just to give it a little added uh, visibility. So last night I went for a little test run with all three of these just to see, just get the feel, see what's going on with them and see what kind of modifications we need to make and see if we can get any kitties on the line with the current version. So here's what happened. Oh, this is this is the fun part, y'all. Mm -hmm. We got some cheese livers, some stink baits. We have some shad, shad in a bag. I've always wanted to try that. By the way, don't want to snip these. We're just out here off the of main lake point, about 25 feet of water. So this is where we're going to drop. The kitty should be biting. I'm having difficulties. This is a learning process for sure. I do not like the bottom. The line has to be tight. It's really hard the way I did it with the increments. So I think I'm gonna come up with a better solution. I've literally just been cutting the excess off right now. So I'm just gonna redo my other lines. Hopefully something gets on the line soon. It's just like staring at a bobber. It's ready, ready to be thumped. So that one right there is actually a little bit suspended. He's not totally on the bottom. So if I had to rate my first version of these, well, the jug is the jug. I mean, it's fine. But on the noodle jugs, I'm gonna give myself like a five and a half. Now that I'm out here, I really understand a lot more what I need to do, make this a lot more efficient and easy. Now would be a good time to have another rod. Another shad, not eaten. Okay, maybe it's my location. I had one more stink bait, didn't even get hit, jeez. That's all she wrote for now, but I don't give up that easy. It's time to go back to the fish cave and make some modifications. So these do work functionally. I mean, the weight slides, the worst part of it, I think, I wasn't able to adjust the depth with my weight where I wouldn't have a bunch of excess line hanging off. And every loop that went down was about five feet. So, you know, I was in about 20 to 25 feet of water and I had about 40 feet of line. So that would mean I'd have to pick a loop down there about 20, 25 feet, put the barrel swivel on it, uh, and then I've got a bunch of excess line hanging off, which I don't like. So I think there needs to be a system where I can wrap the extra line, keep it on the noodle, uh, and then it still keep its functionality. Also, when I go to wrap these things up, it's just a mess. Like, I really wish that I had a better system on here to wrap the line around. Do you want to make some adjustments, make some extra ones that have a different system down here where I don't have to sit there and fumble around with it with the weight hanging off. I mean, I was actually thinking last night I could be sitting there and then a catfish could grab that thing as I'm fumbling with trying to adjust the, uh, the depth and it just, just pull, you know, and get a hook in my hand or something. That's terrible. I was, I do not like that at all. The dehydrated shad. Actually, it's not even dehydrated. It says wounded. I'm not kidding you. It says it's it's a wounded shad. One thing that does work amazing is the Tackle Buddy leader system. Taking them on and off the line is super easy. And I also had the catfish nuggets. That stuff stinks like an old skunk that ate Mexican food the night before. It's just having a bad hangover the next day. A lot of other adjustments I think can be made. So since I build stuff just about every day here at the treehouse, and we're sitting in the construction zone right now. I'm gonna take you guys along for the adjustment build and then we're gonna get these wet. And by the way, the next project after this is going to be the fishing cave wood table build, which I've already been cleaning up. That old wood that we got from that old barn house. That wood is looking amazing. Kitties first though. Like three little holes, and then there was a banana peel. He got in there. He wanted that. And there's bacon grease, so he wanted the bacon. Oh, he wanted that bacon. Have to keep an eye on those raccoons. Got armadillos and skunks in the yard as well, and foxes. It's full blown. Now that I've got all the bird poop and the crusties off of this future shelf that's going in the treehouse, this is going to be our little work area. Build the rest of these jug lines. We got our PVC primer and glue. We got our extra PVC pieces, eyelets. We got silicone. We got duct tape. We have our noodles. We have our pipe. Got a few extra things on my engineer. We'll see if that's relevant here in the future. But right now, let's hit some jams and get to work.
out here, y'all, but we're almost ready. Since I'm experimenting, just about every jug is different. I've experimented with some shrink wrap on some of these to try to keep the lines out. I've experimented with different fluorocarbons, loop knots or the surgeon's loop knot. I've done just straight up barrel swivels and tied surgeon's loop knots to those. Everyone is a little bit different, including the hooks. Some are circles, some are octopus. So this is gonna be the biggest difference right here. It's the ring versus the T-bar. We'll call it the T-bar, I guess. So what this allows me to do is just tie it off, tie a knot like I'd be tying up to a little boat cleat or something like that. I can sit this in any depth. I can adjust this by the inch. This one, it's kind of adjusted by this, this clip right here and I'd have to tie another loop and move up and down. It takes more time and it's not as accurate. However, this one's got a swivel on the end to prevent line twist. This one doesn't. I've spent way more time on this than I ever have doing a bass fishing thing. It's been a long time since I've worked on something this long to try to get it right, but that's why I love fishing so much. I mean, learning a new technique, learning a new type of fishing uh, a rod or system, and then trying to figure out what makes that the best to go and catch that particular fish. You make those mistakes and then you come back and then you learn and learn and learn. And I've been doing that in bass fishing for so long, I kind of take it for granted. Every year I still learn new things. But with this, I've only done this primitively and just kind of for fun in my teenage years. So doing it now to really try to catch fish, especially after going out and uh, failing one time, now I'm like, I'm into it. Especially knowing there's some giant catfish down here where I live and there's tons of opportunities for this. These rigs are ready to go now, so let's go get some more bait options and let's hit the water. Found me a good little spot right off the point. There's a lot of shad down there. We're gonna be using some, some dogs. I got the cheapest hot dogs I could find. I figured they had the grossest stuff in them. Smoke flavoring. Every kitty loves a good smoked sausage. Now one of the main things you wanna focus on with catfish is scent, they use them barbels. Hot dogs got a real oily fattiness to them, so I think that's what that makes them a real good bait. Same thing with shad. They have a lot of oil in them. Whew, sends a nice little scent field off to the fish. I got me a bucket full of the jug lines. This is all this hard work. Hopefully it pays off, guys. Let's put some dogs on some hooks. I've got a couple of them that need dates, so I'm gonna add that with some tape and a Sharpie. Woo, look at that. That looks like a wacky rig, don't it? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna attach our weight. Get a nice juicy hot dog on there. I tried shad last time. They stay on the hook pretty good, but just couldn't get any fish to bite on them. Should just unravel. There it goes. Like this method so much better. A little half itch there. It bombs away on that guy. Okay, we got our line set. Now it's just a waiting game. But this time, I brought some fishing rods. I'm gonna wait till sundown. If nothing bites them, I'm gonna rebait them. And I'm gonna come back in the morning. Let these simmer in the waters. Come on, kiddies. Get to biting. I think that one there is gonna be problematic. It's already drifting. Might have to readjust that one. The moon is full and it is orange. This is the perfect night to stay out all night. I kind of like it from doing it from the boat. You know, I got my line out over here. I'm just dangling it. I got a crappie rod over here in case I want to dangle for some crappies or some white bass. And then I got my, my troop of danglers back here. The lines look pretty good. Still got my hot dogs on there. That was my biggest concern. They were going to come off. Looks like big buffalo carp and stuff like that. It's hanging around here. You know, they're kind of bottom feeders, so that's good to see. And I've caught catfish here before long time ago so that's always a bonus i'm gonna hang out here for a minute or two give it a dangle with my rod and reel watch these puppies a little bit more and then i'm just gonna leave them overnight okay so it's about 10 o'clock so i've stayed out here a little bit and i do see a jug down and i don't know if there's a fish on it but something definitely hit it oh yeah we got a fish on here for uh. oh he just came off Oh, that sucks. It was a little channel cat. Well, he came off, but that was a good sign. Hit the hot dogs, I reckon. So I'm gonna load them up again, see if we can get another one. Okay, another jug has in fact gone down. It's about, I don't know, 10 minutes later. Kind of moved around to a little shallower water. I've got a line out right now, I'm fishing. Just so you guys are aware, that's what they look like when they haven't been hit. And then this one right here has been hit. This is the fun part right here. Let's check it and see what's on this guy. 
Oh no, fish got off. The great news is these things are actually working. I've gotten bit on a couple of the different designs. One that uh, did have the fish on, had the surgical tubing on it, was not tangled when I brought it up. The other ones have been kind of tangled. That's good on that design. I'll probably employ that on some of the other ones. But I checked another one of those, still had the hot dogs on it. So I'm gonna take it in and I'm gonna get out there early. See y'all in the morning. Alright y'all, it's the next morning. We've let them sit. Let's go see if there's anything on here. We've definitely had some lines get taken. I can see that the, uh, the things are sticking straight up. So. Three out of the six down. This is exciting. That's what it looks like when they're down. You got one, two, and there's a third one. So I spread these out from about 16 foot all the way out to 25, and it looks like I've got one on each depth level. One at about 16, one at 20 and then one at 25. So that system worked out pretty good doing it at that depth level. All right, let's check this one first. There's an empty hook, no fish. So that's part of it. The lines don't look very tangled at all, which is good. Oh my gosh, these carp are going nuts over here. Oh, there was definitely one on there. Catfish slime on it and he got off. There's one down. We got two more to check. Let's see what we got. This one's got nothing on it. Don't seem to like these shad too much. So we've definitely got some issues, so I'm going to have to go look at some different knots and stuff like that, keep the bait on better, just some different hook systems. The last one for sure I know has fish on it because I can see the see the buoy moving up and down. Chug number three, going for the win. Oh, it's going. I can see this dude trying to get away. He's not getting away. Fighting already. Come on. Be a good one. Yeah! There we go. There's a kitty. A little channel cat. Good channel cat. Looks like that's going to be the only fish on the line. The rest of the baits have been cleaned off. Could not escape that circle hook. All right, this guy is definitely going into live well, but this system is so cool, guys, and I can't wait to uh, learn a bit, little bit more and, and advance it a little bit. So I'm going to set out some more lines, and I'm going to do a little bit of bass fishing while I'm at it, but this guy is going to be tasty. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. What a learning lesson this has been. This has been, of course, a few days trying to build these and come out and test them and try them out. So if you want to try these, it's a lot of fun. I didn't know how to build these. I just went on the internet and put some things together. The way it slides up and down, it indicates really well. I just got to work on the hook system a little bit. If you guys have suggestions on these, make sure to leave them in the comments. And you know what to do, Fish and Freaks. Hit the subscription button. Go ahead and hit the ding dongs for all the notifications so you never miss a single bite. And I love you guys. I hope you're having a blessed day wherever you are. And I'll see you on the next one.